Hi, I'm Leon Russom. Uh, I'm an actor and probably a third of my stage work's been Shakespeare. There used to be a thing called classic comic books and they put all the great Dickens novels and all of that sort of thing in comic book form and they did Hamlet and the Scottish play and uh, that was the first time I ever saw those. I didn't know anything about them and then about uh, age 12 I was reading the Scottish play and the bloody sergeant said that Macbeth's sword smoked with bloody execution. And I instantly saw the vaporization of warm blood in the air. And I went, oh my God. And that was when I fell in love with poetry. I didn't know what a metaphor was, but it sure had an effect on me. And from then on, I was hooked. Attention to the text is what Shakespeare's taught me. And I think it pays off with contemporary plays. And probably even in television and film, though I don't really think about it at the time. And also, it just gives you so much pleasure. You know, just to sit down and read him at random. There's, there's a wonderful thing in Henry IV, and I remember when I was a young man, there's a character called Richard Vernon, and he, he has maybe three speeches but one of them has hung in my head, and I've never played the part, but the speech has hung in my head ever since, which was, I, oh, he's talking to Hotspur, and they ask him about Prince Hal, and he goes, I saw young Harry with his beaver on, his queasers on his thighs, spring from the ground like feathered mercury and vault into the saddle with such ease as Torah, angel dropped from heaven to turn and wind a fiery Pegasus, and it really, pisses Hotspur off, but it's so beautiful. And that was given to a character with just like three lines. He was that rich that he could just do that. It's when it communicates without a barrier, you know? And I, I did a lot of listening to Shakespeare when I was a younger actor because there weren't that many big productions. And so I could probably do every inflection of Richard Burton's Coriolanus or Paul Schofield's Lear, or Paul Schofield's Hamlet, which unfortunately we only have on audio. But uh, those productions are thrilling. The best American Hamlet that I've ever seen was a woman, and she played Hamlet as a, like the brightest 15-year-old you've ever seen in your life, uh, Diana Venora. And uh, she's the best American Hamlet I've seen. Uh, because Hamlet, the reason everybody loves it is he's clearly an adolescent, no matter what Gertrude says about being fat and 30 and short of breath. Uh, it's the generational struggle that we all go through. So naturally, it's the play that everyone can relate to the most, you know, and that every young actor ought to have a chance to try. And now every young actress. Well, first, you've got to be a great actor. And then you have to trust. You have to trust so much the words because they, they'll do it all for you. I mean, people say things that American actors would find disturbing, like there is no subtext to Shakespeare. I don't think that's true, but I think that what it is is that Shakespeare tells you how to say it if you pay enough attention. And then once you've found all those moments that he told you about, a subtext arises and you find it, but you can't go into it with a, I hate concepts. I hate going in with, well, you know, the Scotsman's a, a, a latent homosexual or, you know, oh, I, I just find all those things kind of silly. If you, if you say the words and realize where they're taking you, you'll find out who you are. It's been a while since I've done any of the sonnets aloud, but I remember when I was very young, one of the sonnets appealed to me a great deal, and it's not one of the most melodic. It's Sonnet 94, and uh, it's Shakespeare's answer to Machiavelli, in my mind. It's, it's what, uh, he was very concerned with what a leader is and what a, what a uh, 
always concerned with order and chaos, and this is uh, uh, about that. They that have the power to hurt and will do none, who do not do the thing they most do show, who moving others are themselves as stone, unmoved, cold, and to temptation slow. They rightly do inherit heaven's graces and husband nature's riches from expense. They are the lords and owners of their faces, others but stewards of their excellence. The summer's flower is to the summer sweet, though to itself it only live and die. But should that flower with base infection meet, the basest weed outbraves his dignity. For sweetest things turn sourest with their deeds. Lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. Mm -hmm.